Hello everybody. In this video I am going to troubleshoot an issue with the HVAC system in my 2001 Dodge Ram 1500. Um, the issue I've got is that when I adjust the temperature controls on the dash, um, nothing seems to happen. My, my temperature control seems to be stuck on hot. Whether I switch it to cold or not, uh, and if, if I turn the fan on it's going to blow out hot air. Um, I've been dealing with it for a while, I've just kind of lived with it, um, and I've, I meant to do this repair before the summer um, so that I didn't have uh, warm air wafting out of my vents at all times, whether the fan's running or not, uh, but I just never got around to it, um, but uh, the, the issue can occur in the opposite, uh, you can get stuck on cold air. And since we're getting close to winter here, I thought that since I was going to do this repair, I may as well film it and try to help out someone that might have the exact opposite issue and is uh, dealing with being freezing in their truck here as the weather's getting colder. So um, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Now the issue is basically that we um, the blend door, which uh, will basically divert air over the AC coil or the heater core, um, you know, in basically 0% or 100% warm air. Um, that has a motor and a door that will divert that air. Um, and the issue is that the, uh, the part that links the motor to the door fails after time and no matter what you do on the dash, the motor may try to move the blend door, but uh, the blend door is basically stuck. So uh, just a quick rundown on how the AC system works. You've got a fan motor here. And in fact, I've replaced mine. I think I made a video about that. Um, but that's what blows the air through the, the ducting. Um, and then you've got a plenum box, which is basically this whole assembly under here that houses the AC um, coil that the refrigerant runs through and gets cold. And it also houses the heater core, which is basically nothing but a small radiator. It has coolant from the engine cycling through it and warms up. So when you blow air over the AC coil, obviously the air gets cooled. When you blow it over the heater core, it gets warmed. And the blend door will basically proportion how much air flows over each coil, whether it's 100% cooling, 100% heating, or somewhere in between. Um, so we need to remove the blend door actuator, which is housed right here. And I, I believe the part that fails is sort of a, a little collar that connects the motor to a shaft that runs up into the plenum box and moves the blend door itself. Um, so we need to remove two Phillips screws I believe there's one here and I believe there's also one way back here which why the engineers chose to locate it where you can barely get to it is beyond me I think I can catch a glimpse of it back there but uh, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get this out uh, I think the first thing I need to do is probably peel the carpet back um, and I could probably do it without moving this plastic cover but I'm gonna just to make things easier on myself I'm gonna remove that first a couple of screws inside there they look like Phillips so I'm gonna go ahead and remove those two pull that cover out of the way and we'll see if that helps us pull the carpet back let me get to that and I'll be right back okay I've got the two Phillips screws removed uh, this is what they look like when they come out they got sort of a washer head on them uh, so now this cover can be removed we'll just pull this back and yeah, that'll expose the edge of the carpet, which should make it a lot easier to pull back like that. And hopefully that will give us access to the screw we need to get to. Uh, I'll have to poke my head around there and see if I can locate it. We may have to cut the uh, sound deadening slash carpet pad out of the way to get to it. Um, now I did forget to mention in the opening segment that um, I've purchased a repair kit from a company called Heater Treater 
Uh, if you go on the internet, just web search the name Heater Treater, T-R-E-A-T-E-R. They sell repair kits uh, for multiple manufacturers for this very uh, issue. So I've, I've ordered that. Here's what they send you. Um, we've got a new actuator shaft here. That's what's going to actually turn the blend door. Uh, we've got, that's handy, they send you a new installation screw with, looks like, a couple of hex nuts that you can put on the end. So instead of having to try to get a Phillips screwdriver to that back screw that's impossible to see, uh, you can put a couple of hex nuts on there and use a ratchet and maybe like a... Uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Almost like a U-joint type driver shaft to get that off. And there's a wiring harness here. I'm not sure if we're going to end up needing that or not. But um, And then, of course, they send you instructions. They actually have their own YouTube video, but the, the video quality was really poor. Uh, I had a hard time seeing exactly what they were showing, so I figured I'd go ahead and make my own while I'm at it, see if I can add some more detail and information. So... Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hunt for that back screw, see if I can find it, and figure out how to get it out and show that process. Uh, I'll be right back. Alright, so I have located that second screw. I was actually looking on the wrong side of the actuator. I was looking on the right-hand side. It's not over there. There's a like an alignment pin here. It's not a screw. But if you look in the back, see the shiny thing right there? That is the second screw. It's pretty daggone tight to the padding. But if I push the padding down, I think I can get back to it. Now I have a um, have a flexible screwdriver. Looks like this. And you can see it. It'll make a right hand bend or more. I'm hoping that that bend radius for the tip is small enough to kind of wedge back there and get a bite on that screw. If not, then I guess I'm going to be forced to cut some of the padding out of the way. But uh, I'm going to try this first. We will see if I'm able to get a shot of that working. I will certainly do so. Um, but bear with me. I'll be right back. All right. Well, unfortunately, my screwdriver is, is not going to fit up there. Um, even with the flexible shaft on it, it's just... It's too tight of a space to get, so I think I'm going to have to take a sharp razor knife and kind of cut the padding down like this, maybe back across and back up, and pull that out um, just so I can get more clearance below the screw. And even then, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get it out, but um, I'm going to remove the padding first and just kind of spitball from there and see what I can come up with. All right, before I get in here with a knife and start cutting the padding, I decided it would probably be a good idea to disconnect the wiring harness so I don't accidentally cut it. And it looks like there's a little squeeze tab here on the right that you just squeeze in and pull down. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so let me see if I can film this. tough to get the camera in there but squeeze in and then pull straight down you can swing that out of the way so now I can get in there with my knife uh, so let me do that and see if that makes a difference all right so I've done a little surgery on the um, carpet pad um, you can see there's quite a bit of foam underneath it. I didn't realize quite how thick that foam padding is, but it's probably every bit of 5 eighths or 3 quarters of an inch thick. So removing it really does give you a lot more access. Uh, and you can kind of see what I did, hopefully. Um, you know, I cut a kind of a, a wedge shape. Um, I cut it nice and clean and then I peeled back. There's a, there's a rubber on top that is kind of separate from the foam pad. I peeled that rubber back behind the actuator housing as, as much as I could. Um, and then I just kind of tore 
the pad out. It came out pretty much in one piece. So I'm hoping that maybe when I'm done, I can fit that back in. Just kind of tuck it there and pull the rubber back down over it. Um, so at least it'll still provide some sound deadening. Um, now, you can see that it's still tight, but you can see the screw back there. Um, really the best thing to use here would be like a uh, right angle screwdriver, kind of like a, an Allen wrench, but with a Phillips head on the end. Unfortunately, I can't find mine. Um, I know I used to have one, but there's no telling where it is. Um, I don't feel like going to buy one, so I'm going to try sort of a crazy contraption here. Um, I took a crescent wrench and got a good bite on just a regular Phillips driver bit and just did a test. That seems like it's going to work. It's going to be slow and it's going to be a pain in the butt. And I'm sure the tip is going to want to like push down. Um, thankfully, the screw is not in there tight, so... Um, I'm not going to have to put a lot of upward force on it. Uh, I just need to rotate it. So I'm going to try to do that. I'll see if I can't rig up my camera to maybe get a shot of that while I'm doing it. Um, but regardless, once I get that screw out, then we'll move uh, to the front. You can see I've already taken the front one out, actually. Uh, but it comes out here. That one's really easy to get to. Um, I did use my flexible screwdriver to get it out. But... Um, it, it came out very easily so I'm gonna take the I'm probably gonna put this one back in so this thing's not trying to drop on me as I um, as I remove the back screw that I should have thought about that I'll put this back in get the back one out and then I'll pull this one so let me see if I can get the camera in position to watch what I'm doing in the back all right so I don't know if you can see this but I'm in place and I'm able to get a little bit of a bite on the screw and do like, I don't know, an eighth of a turn at a time. Again, a right angle screwdriver would be much more helpful here. I really wish I could find mine, but sometimes you just make do with what you got. I'm not sure if this is visible or not at all on uh, from the vantage point of my camera right now, but the screw is turning slowly. Hardest part is getting the wrench turned far enough around to, when I reposition it to get another bite, but it is turning. I'd love to see one of the engineers that designed this work on this himself. So, all right, well, hopefully you can get the gist. I'm probably a quarter of the way out with the screw. I'm not gonna make you watch all of this, but um, you get the picture, hopefully. Let me finish pulling this out, um, and then we will move along with this, hopefully much faster.